Neo 2, a game with big shoes to fill after years of hype surrounding it. And if walking outside has taught me anything, it's that there is no better way to fill shoes than with a series of increasingly sharp objects. It starts off with narration, as many things do, but takes a weird twist with the narrator being murdered. Turns out it was my mother, and we're both attacked by the main antagonist. If I'm understanding it right, this dagger she gives you grants you immortality, sacrificing her own life to save yours, but why didn't the grey dude just take it? I'm currently but a wee child. Whatever the case, I'm thrust into character customization where I changed almost nothing because I don't personally like customizing characters all that much. And I'm to pick my build for the run. They do this in the form of weapons that I can't use and a spirit that won't have any bearing on anything that I do. I personally prefer the established character that is William, but we're playing as a silent protagonist today. Honestly, kind of a shame. Much like the first game, the start of the run is going to have me going around collecting Emeritus that I can invest into Dexterity. It's the main stat that affects ninjutsu damage, and when leveled, it doesn't give you skill points. That's gonna be a problem. So instead, I ran around collecting items. You can quit out of the mission and reload it to respawn most items at the cost of all of the unspent emerita you have. I also went around finding little living collectibles called Kodama. In case you haven't read the title, I'm gonna be trying to get through the whole game using only ninjutsu. No weapons, no elixirs, just the items provided by the ninja tree. But there's one major problem. As far as I'm aware, you literally can't get those without first getting a skill point which you can only get by a consumable that I can't get yet, or by using consumable versions of the jutsu that you can't find until the next mission. Unless, of course, you say, got a ton of items which you offered to the shrine, and repeatedly reloaded the area until you got a better set of items available at the Kodama Bazaar. You can get a currency from said offerings that let you purchase the necessary consumables early that let me throw around some shuriken, which gives me proficiency, which works as a sort of experience, which lets me gain a single skill point. And if you're confused, I'm sorry, but we have a lot of ground to cover. I won't be using said consumables at all from here on out. I did use some ninja locks to get more skill points later down the line and a divine branch fragment to exit missions, but otherwise that is it. Now with shuriken in hand, I fought my way through the area. Each time I hit an enemy with them, I get a little bit of proficiency, which means a little bit closer to having more to work with. When I finally started being able to kill enemies, it meant I could get more emerita to spend on leveling up, thus doing more damage. Because more than anything, I consistently needed more damage. I spent ages farming. Or, to be fair, it was actually closer to around four and a half hours, which was about half the time of the first Neo, so it's not that bad. I knew I was ready when after some practice and a whole lot of luck, I was able to kill an optional mini-boss with the power of poison. Turns out, the actual boss of the first mission is pretty similar, so this shouldn't be too bad. I started off by poisoning it via mist, burning it with my fire bombs. Damage over time was a must, given how little damage was at my disposal. What I didn't realize at the time is when we shift realms indicated by the screen going gray like this, enemies will buck any and all statuses I so painstakingly put on them. Real nice. Also, these projectiles from the enemy can go through the environment. It's been requested, though, that I track and share how many attempts bosses took me. So for those interested, here you go. Really not so bad, me thinks. You'll have to let me know if it's something you're interested in seeing. It's a bit of extra bookkeeping, but it was interesting seeing the difficulty curves as I was going through. I then got to the first sort of technicality for the run. I'm playing as a yokai. The game requires that you perform certain story-based finishers throughout the game, usually forcing a transformation. So no, you can't beat it with only jutsu or magic, technically most things in the game. If that ruins it for you, then I'm sorry, and I hope you have a good day regardless. For everyone else who's willing to accept that this immediately pulls you into a cutscene-like thing and is thus a required mechanic, the run continues. The character loses it, only coming to his senses with the help of this man right here, and my new best friend. The main character is named Hide, or referred to as Hitty. As far as I can tell, though, we're more or less joining him on a whim, as he tries to rise in status and finances while trying to create a world in which people and yokai can live in harmony. We're working for a dude with similar goals and gathering Emerita to keep it from being abused by other people. On such a mission, I would pretty much exclusively run for my foes. While I've already come a really long way in terms of my build, ammo is still really limited. I can clearly fight when I need to, but a lot of what I do still comes from statuses. It works great for slower enemies like this one, but it's terrible for when they're quick or there's more than one enemy to worry about. The risk of being overwhelmed is high, to say the least. In a sort of way to combat this playstyle, they introduced areas that essentially have to be cleared out to make things more manageable. Luckily, they never really became much of an issue. I did find some gear along my way that improved my damage. And you may not like it, but for now, this is what peak performance looks like. I eventually made it to the second boss. Maybe unsurprisingly, he's damn near immune to fire. I did my best to poison him, since one of my two main statuses is useless. Turns out, though, he can pretty much just freeze my game entirely. Good work, my guy! He does some damage to himself when he knocks down these pillars by way of dumping water on his head. Learning to avoid his fire tornado attacks was a must, but really, he's not so bad. His kicks have a surprisingly short range and leave him vulnerable for a long time. 
More than anything, it came down to having enough ammo. And funny enough, it was firebombs that strike the final blow to the big bad. Afterwards, I'm attacked by this lady. Funny that she's wearing a yokai mask, and I'm wearing a human one. My friend tried really hard to work things out between the two of us, but she wasn't having it. Really though, does this not look like a face that you can trust? Turns out our employer is being attacked though, so we gotta go in and save him. And I gotta say, the environments in this game are both varied and gorgeous. I don't know if they're necessarily deserving of any awards for technical achievements, but they were really pretty to look at, and they were fun to get lost in. Which I of course mean literally. Them being easier to navigate than the maps in the first game doesn't mean I'm going to suddenly gain the ability to traverse my environment. Like, I was in the mountains only moments ago, and now I'm going through tunnels with poison pools and incredibly hard to break statues, and the transition felt natural, and I really like this game. For the record, I can break said statues, just cost me most of my throwables to do for each one. Breaking them removes some of the poison from the area, and even from this boss arena. This isn't like other bosses, though. It has snake arms. Its head is its weak spot when it glows, which is going to be necessary to hit to get the most possible damage. Its arms can be killed, which does some damage, but less than just hitting it directly, so hitting them is ill-advised. Good luck avoiding hitting them specifically, though, because unsurprisingly, the snake boss is incredibly wiggly, and missing was a constant issue. Based on the environment, you've probably already worked out that it's immune to poison, which up until now has been most of my damage against stronger enemies. And because of how early it is in the game, I really don't have access to a lot of options. I tried absolutely anything and everything at my disposal, and let me put it simply. Need I say more? I got pretty close here and there. After spending a long while farming though, it became pretty apparent that I wasn't going to get through without some sort of breakthrough in my damage. It would come in the form of a fire damage over time, which isn't exactly easy to apply, nor does it do a ton. But I'm trying to squeeze every drop I can out of this arsenal of mine. When you apply damage over time status to enemies, they'll slowly tick down, but you can replenish that by applying more of the triggering element. I threw caution to the wind to apply burn, and proceeded to do anything and everything that I could to maintain it. I tried to only attack the snake when it was coming toward me, while also vulnerable, to do the most with what I had. Avoid as many misses as I could. And when I was sure I finally had enough left, down with the menace. I found my employer who was apparently my dad, and instead of coming with me to safety, he decided to stay behind to buy time. Turns out his card was declined. Both his life and a really thick stone door only amounted to a few seconds, and after having spent most of my time running from things already, let me just say that his death meant absolutely nothing. Also, the yokai hunter lady changed her mind and is helping now. Not sure why, but the more the merrier. I didn't lock the first dojo mission for ninjutsu, meaning after a few thrown items, I've got some new options to play with. We're both out of the job though, so we've got to find a new method of payment quick. Eh, it'll do. We're off to battle, and I'm to collect someone's head. I'm not paid enough to ask questions, so I'm paid to get results. I found this creep, and get results I would. I took a pretty big hit early on, but his attacks are super easily avoided. I can now also throw my attacks out faster. Sure, he blocked a lot, but he really just didn't have the health to survive my onslaught. First try, let's go. Whoa, whoa, that is against the rules. You put that thing away. For having killed the easiest boss yet, we were promoted, and we were promptly thrown into a race among his men to build him a castle. To get the upper hand, we'd enlist the help of local yokai by way of extreme violence, and also befriending them through violence. Listen, it's complicated. To get the materials and whatnot, I'd have to fight Toby Kadachi? Or Nargakuka? I don't know, but it's wiggly, fast, and dangerous. It pretty regularly avoids my solo projectiles by way of trees for cover, and I just really didn't like this fight. Never really got a good feel for most of its moves. Statuses were ridiculously hard to build up on it, and the trees. The friggin' trees. My final attempt was luck. I'm not gonna mince words, I got lucky. It sat still enough times in the fight for me to throw things until it went down. We helped the creature to see things our way, and despite it taking relatively few attempts, I really didn't enjoy our bouts. Surprisingly quickly this time, I already have access to the next dojo mission. I've got six sure can kill five ninja. Not great math given their damage output. I ended up tempering my talismans for poison buildup though, so I was able to inflict it with only one throw each. With that, I was pretty easily able to defeat all of them and further improve my arsenal. We're here to avenge my absent father, which doesn't have me even remotely invested. Not because of the story or anything, just personal reasons. It all starts with me breaking into a castle, which has me going through a surprisingly large variety of visual stylings, and seriously. It's incredible to me how they made the maps feel realistic, but grand. Huge, but manageable. Again, I got lost, sure, but I never truly felt overwhelmed by the directions. This game is a visual treat. Granted, it's only been out for a few years, time will tell how it ages. I get a boss who has both of the spirits that I didn't choose at the beginning of the game. Saito is incredibly easy, did nothing to close distance, letting me just repeatedly bombard them. Literally. They're revealed to have my exact face, but it's been mostly covered for the playthrough, and I don't like customizing things, so I wasn't even sure on the first watch. Also, I found the guy that tried to murder me. Just in time for the cavalry to arrive. Thanks, guys.
With our improved status, we humbly request a new name, combining the ones we have, inseparable, Hideyoshi. Two people, one name. A wish that is granted. We loyally stay behind to slow the enemy while our forces are able to move elsewhere. With a bit of help. My poor cowardly compatriot. But I do love him. Whoa, 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 who the hell gave you permission to actually be creepy? I did not give permission to you terrifying creatures of the night to be scary. It is not allowed in this household. Turns out my yokai killing compatriot is weak sauce and got beaten by a bunch of swirly spirits. You've got to take things more seriously than that. You can't be distracted by, it's an owl. Oh my God, and look how cute it is. Oh, I love it. I want to take it home to pet and cuddle. I'll take good care of it. We can be best friends and damn, there's no way that I could have avoided such a fate. I went back and forth trying different strategies. The attacks it does throwing out a ton of projectiles that track from different directions was hard to deal with. So I didn't. Yeah, I'd briefly tried the elemental ninjutsu earlier in the game and sort of just written them off because they sucked. And they do, but they also don't. It's complicated, they're situational. As you can see here, in some cases they shine brightly. So brightly in fact that my nocturnal friend needs to take a nap. And when it wakes up, I'm taking it home with me. My dagger and her suspiciously handguard-like medallion glow. We, of course, will not combine these things until the third act. We begin the counteroffensive to find a yokai wearing a yokai mask. As always, there were a lot of enemies between the two of us, but I caught up in time to see Hanzo being a coward and this guy in way over his head. Just in time to save the poor fool, using methods that are illegal! I'll have you know that blocking is strictly forbidden. He's super slow though, and doesn't close gaps well. No, wait, let me back up! Ah, damn it. I almost did something cool there. Eh, eh, cool. Cause, cause everything here is made out of ice. He's really not so bad though. After just not getting caught in the environment, he went down without much fanfare. Funny enough, I was even able to break his stance before killing him for having the audacity to try to phase transition. Good stuff. I got to meet the T-Man. I didn't immediately, but I eventually joined the Bomb Clan because, well, you'll, you'll see. Next up was a rescue mission. Functionally, the big difference between this mission and the last is... So there isn't much of one, but there are spiders in this mission that I'm just not even going to show. No, not even going to give you the satisfaction, you sadistic developers. They're just as creepy as the last game, except they're more visually impressive, which is just worse. And of course, they're going to be recurring enemies. So I was genuinely trying to keep up with this game's plot. I don't ignore these sorts of things on purpose, but I can be slow to pick things up. I'm not perfect, nor am I going to pretend to be. But I am terrible with names, and I have no idea who this is, except that he's really easy. Sure, I pulled a dumb and died, but that doesn't change the fact that he was a pushover. Dude's got no key to speak of. Turns out he was possessed by this creep, who then just kind of left. His dying wish was for his wife to be safe. There had to have been a better way to help the guy out, but he's gone. And here it is, finally seeing my friend lose himself. It was inevitable, I suppose. Not allowed to love anything without it being ruined, am I? Don't go, man. Talk it out. Even if it's one-sided, I'm here to listen. I'm your friend. Now, don't ask how or why, but it was only about here that I realized that I was serving the man that I am and his relation to the first Neo. Seriously, I'm absolutely awful with names. I'm here to help him take over another location though, as is his desire. The whole siege was a cool backdrop. The place was cool, as was consistently the case, but I'm still not exactly competent. At the end of it is this guy. Easy boss from the first game. Naturally, he'll be... Oh. I did pretty well. The next go should... Huh. Yeah, so he used to be a lot stronger. He has damn near limitless key. He constantly blocks and dodges. Well, actually, all of the human bosses both dodge and block a lot. It's a major problem in every encounter like it. Some are worse than others, but it's really hard to get damage in consistently without it being wasted against their perfect block or just missing. Repeatedly. While the human AI in the first game was absolutely terrible, in this it just felt... unfair. He's constantly attacking, he moves around cover in such a way as to leave you with none, and his range covers the whole battlefield. So you can't escape him via distance. I don't have enough damage to try the strategy of locking him into blocking like William, so this took a bit. You can get in maybe two throws of standard throwables when his guard is down, which is only in a small window right after he attacks. I was careful to memorize what attacks he had available because I really couldn't afford to bleed his health. I did everything that I could to keep poison up, and I fought him in a drawn out endurance match that was mostly just me waiting for openings in a fight that I would simply call frustrating. But he's not even the final boss for this mission. No, 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 there is one more. Let me give you a formal arachnophobia warning, sort of. If you don't like spiders, you're not likely to enjoy this, so this is your last chance. Three, two, one. What the hell am I looking at? It's massive and ridiculously fast. As far as I can tell, you absolutely can't get away from it. There isn't even the foggiest concept of personal space floating around between those ears. You can try to iframe everything, it does, but it's huge and you're pretty much guaranteed to still be in its hitbox when your iframes run out. So 
So you've got to get behind it. Which is really fun because its stomp attack tracks you better than the FBI. It moving hurts you. It existing hurts me. I found it was best to sort of be both near it and not. Also, pinwheel shurikens are amazing. They do multiple ticks of damage as long as they're in contact with it, so that and breaking its stance works wonders. This is a mandatory finisher though, so nothing else to be done here. Smashy smash! And he's gone. Damn, man. I did at least finally unlock Wave the Ninja Veteran. Just gotta beat this guy who has the improved human AI. With terrible tools to do it. Great. Swapped up my talisman and finally joined the Bomb Clan for one simple reason. Bombs. They're basically the only thing worth using against him. I did everything I could to beef up specifically my bomb damage because he constantly blocks, dodges, and has a talisman that lets him just survive death. If you bomb him enough before he uses it though, he just doesn't get a chance and I get rewarded. It wasn't perfectly consistent, but you could more or less start the fight by throwing bombs and then hold him in place with shuriken to finish the job. Funny enough, the talisman he uses doesn't seem to always save him from death when he dies via damage over time, so sometimes the burn is enough anyway. I don't know. Not sure why, but it's how it went. Well, damn, another boss dead. I can at least avenge him by killing a wheel-based cat lady, okay. Okay, probably not the weirdest thing I've done lately. I'm not really sure what to say about the fight, though. She closes distance quickly and has huge AoEs, but despite that, circle strafing the backwards direction led to a really comfortable first try victory. Okay, okay, time for an actual Rising Revengeance, which I shall achieve with this metal gear that I carry. Also, from the bottom of my heart, I hate this place. If you've been through here, you can probably guess why. The mission's boss was incredibly slow, though. Honestly, I'm disappointed that I died even once to this thing. Super avoidable ranged attacks. Not even an excessive amount of health or anything. It was just easy. Ah, uh, it's you! Well, bye then. See you when you decide to stop being a coward! Also, my friend stabs and kills a man. The first time I've ever actually seen him use a weapon for more than intimidation. Yeah, I'm gonna need a minute to think about what you're doing here. Hey man, I need some help. I'm chained inside a bit here. Out of the job and all that. I'm headed toward Iga. Lucky for me, I got to meet up with Hanzo. He'll probably eventually be helpful for my build. Right off the bat though, I get his cat spirit, which is basically the only one in the game that has a meaningful impact on ninjutsu, so I finally have one worth mentioning. It, uh, mildly buffs my damage. Yay. I've got to do a battle with a man that I once called a comrade. You hate to see it. Hate to see that he sucks! Sure, he's a bit of a nuisance, but building my jutsu list out with the human AI in mind, I was able to hit him with things that he didn't know how to avoid, like landmines and homing attacks that obliterated his keybar and even gave him the confused status, which made him super vulnerable to damage, after which time he was as easy as to come. He wasn't the only boss here, though, and I was tasked with killing this unholy abomination. Was this the hardest boss in the game? No, not by a long stretch. But oh my god, I hated every unfortunate moment with this thing. It wasn't even close to an issue of dealing enough damage. It can sometimes block, sure, but it was mostly just an issue of staying alive. With light armor in this game, if you get hit once, you're screwed. It's not even an issue of getting one shot, it's an issue of not being able to get out of stun locks. And pretty much everything stuns you. Damn near anything this bastard can do will lock you in place, and the next hit will be lethal. I died to this charge move damn near on loop. And I just can't stand how it feels like fighting an uglier Diablos in a tiny room. In the end, I found that it really helped to stay central within the room to be able to sidestep him more effectively, because I sure as hell wasn't outpacing him. All I came down to was how well you can deal with a hitbox with legs constantly trying to plow face first into you. And I eventually managed to do just that. With the Emirate more or less possessing people, I save another person from themselves by way of killing them. Their final wish being for me to protect their wife, who doesn't want to be saved. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. There's help out there to get you through just about anything you can imagine. And things may seem really overwhelming when they're occurring. It may be extremely trying to go through emotional pain like losing a loved one. But one of the most important things that you can ever do is take the time that you need to step away from things. Take care of yourself. Let others help to take care of you. Don't make any important decisions in those moments because the world is a better place with you happy and unharmed within it. And that may not be today, it may not be tomorrow or even within the year, because healing takes time. But we'll never have the privilege of having you in that state if you're not here anymore. And if you're doing well, this is otherwise lost on you, then maybe reach out to someone you love. Remind them of such. You never know when even a small gesture can change someone's day for the better. The physics in the scene and many others are just a bit wrong. And sure, it'd be hard to account for what I'm wearing, but what about them? Also, like my new clothes? I stole them from my last teacher. I don't think he'll mind. 
And if he does, he'll have to come after me without armor. So, anyways, I did have to respect my character to put some points into skill and constitution to wear it. 15 con, 17 skill, and literally every other point I ever got went straight into dex. It was a very focused build. The boss here, though, was my friend. Trying to bargain for my loyalty when all he had to do was be a good person. The person that he once was. It really wasn't hard. And again, me being bad doesn't make it any less easy. I just messed up. As did he. But that wouldn't be the end. Just a new beginning. No, really, he's not dead though, just a vessel for this guy. Things obviously didn't calm down, and there were a lot of hostile yokai, including but not limited to my friend from earlier. Step 1. Distance yourself from your toxic friends, who tried to literally and metaphorically stab you in the back. Step 2. Throw. Step 3. Repeat step 1 and 2 until there's nothing left to throw things at. Another double boss mission though, and I'm supposed to somehow fight this thing, which can shoot you through itself. Real nice. Gonna cut straight to the point here, you'll spend most of your time in this fight trying to stick really close to it to avoid most of its attacks. Also, the amount of damage you can do is more or less random, because the only place even remotely worth hitting is these spots on his hand. The only way you're gonna get nearly enough damage out of your kit is if you hit more than one of them with most of your attacks. So the weird hitboxes and aiming in this game have a bit of say in how well you do. It wants you to do a finisher thing on its eye to phase transition, but absolutely do not do that, because that would be cheating. Instead, wait a really long time for it to just get back up and refresh its hand hit zones. It's really weak to fire, so the fire shadow arts were a godsend. Sometimes they do really respectable damage, sometimes they'd miss, but other times... yeah. Took somewhere around 20 tries to get RNG to turn in my favor. I say around because I might have lost count, I'm not sure. It was at least pretty close to that. You do have to end the fight on a finisher, but I want to be very clear that there is only one that's mandatory. I only did this once the entire fight. I'm then pretty easily defeated and killed. Really cuts deep. I meet up with my mother momentarily to be told that I need to fix my knife so that it's a sword again and to get back out there, champ. You'll get it this time. This is where I would unlock the mission with Hanzo and, uh, turns out his AI sucks here. You can throw things at him without triggering the actual fight, so you can just continuously poison him without him retaliating. Make no mistake though, I didn't have even nearly enough damage with the items that they force upon you for this mission, and I'm already leveled way beyond the soft cap for damage. Hell, I nearly hit the hard cap before the run finished. I got a really cool section of the game that had me running around some gorgeous locales while lowering water levels. It took a while to get where I was going, and I really hate lock-on sometimes, but I eventually made my way through enough yokai to find my favorite frenemy, who had this guy attack me. For a boss so deep into things, I really expected him to be more complicated than a slow moving target with fire resistance. I had more trouble with getting stuck on bits of the environment than I did killing him. I found one of my closest living companions, no longer living, and got the final mission repeated boss rush that we all know and love. So two tries for this big guy here, easy enough. I died five times to these, made no progress on any attempt. Hated everything about the constant onslaught of damage with no real way to do anything about it, so I left because it's optional anyway. Beat a snake and even a cat lady on two tries each. We good? All up to date? Cool! Because my best friend is still a back and front stabbing poor possessed sap, but also the leader of Japan. He's engaged to a yokai, and she's also a very large building. That clear things up? Great, because this boss is bullshit. To cut it really long story short, I hate this fight. You have to defeat four tentacles. Each have a lot of health. Only then can you attack the eye, dealing actual damage to the boss. But of course, you couldn't possibly do this just once. In her normal phase, you have two tentacles that you can damage, and two that you can't out at any given time. The main tentacles do a lot of damage, and they're faster than a lot of my attacks, sure. But the big tentacles that I can't hurt also attack me, meaning attacks can be incoming from about five different directions, meaning you have to hope that you can remember what each and every sound from her means, because in her other phase, you get all four tentacles, and the rubbish ones that you can't do anything about, all at the same time. Most of my jutsu did next to nothing, and I do mean most of them. I went through most of my list on loop, just trying to figure out anything that could do anything for me. The worst part, though, is it was a pain in the ass to even test things because my armor is over 60 levels too low. Because I haven't upgraded anything since I got it. And it cost about 5 million gold to improve, and I don't know how to tell you this, but I don't have 5 million gold to spend improving a single piece of armor. The only attacks I can genuinely recommend maybe using are the second tier of lightning and water shadow arts. Sometimes they just miss. Okay, a lot of the time, but especially lightning. Sometimes they do a bunch of damage in one hit. Sometimes they straight up one-shot tentacles. Beyond that, the pinwheel shurikens do a ton of damage, and you'd be doing yourself a disservice not to be using them on such a large boss. But there was still the matter of surviving. I left the mission to farm for the required smithing text to make brand new armor, and reroll it until I had skills that sort of helped, which surprisingly only took an additional 29 times. Tried that out, spoilers, it wasn't good enough. 
because I didn't have enough skill points to afford to upgrade my jutsu cost, so I didn't have enough damage, so I left the mission to respec, which means I would have to complete everything in the mission up to that point for a third time, but not before stopping to fight Hanzo to unlock the last tier of ninja skills. Which, by the way, meant I had to get untouched ninjutsu to proc enough times to beat him with no real improvements on my build. I don't actually know how many times I needed it to proc, but I know 5 times on 34% chance still wasn't enough. I don't know how long I spent on it, because it was around 5 in the morning, and I was tired after staying up all night just trying to figure out how the hell to beat a house. And I know it was around 5 in the morning, because while trying to beat Hanzo, I tabbed out so I could get some footage of the successful attempt, but my computer broke, and I spent half an hour troubleshooting things while neither of my mouse nor keyboard would let me interact with anything, and I still don't know how or why, but I got it working, thanks to the emotional support of one of the fine folks within our Discord, because I was terrified of trying to restart that fight. It was purely RNG, and I just really didn't want to try rolling that again. If you want to hear about me flailing desperately at incredibly stupid issues at really weird hours of the day in real time, then the link is in the description. With damn near the absolute pinnacle of my build achieved, this was it. Nothing I could improve upon. It was this or nothing. And it was still luck-based. I had to get lucky with attacks landing just right. I had to get lucky enough that untouched ninjutsu would trigger. The only thing I really had control over was when and where I attacked. I would generally advise baiting out a physical attack just before using something of your own, because their ranged attacks let them recover quickly enough to attack again before you finish using Shadow Arts. The second phase, I mostly just used pinwheels. Can I just say though, to whoever put an invisible barrier here so you can't fall off the arena, thank you. This fight was hellish enough as is and it doesn't need gravity in the mix, so thank you. After a total of 71 tries, I successfully slayed the spire. Or killed a building, whatever. At the end of the day, I've conquered bosses that have taken literal hours. Sometimes even just for one attempt. But today, I successfully used windows. Which is pretty impressive if you ask me. The boss requires a finisher, which I was relieved to be able to deliver, and finally, we have an answer to the question this all started on. Wait, what do you mean that wasn't the final boss? Not even the last region of the game! Okay, so I have the MacGuffin Sword, we completely waste our element of surprise to make a piss poor entrance to get an absolutely terrible one-liner, and then watch him escape via slowly walking away. Gotta say, I've heard worse plans in my life, but this one is still a hell of a stinker. You wouldn't believe just how much ground he got on me, but I was able to catch up through... Damn, this is pretty. Sorry, I was able to catch up to easily beat him on my first try. I once again saved someone from themselves with brutal violence, and it's no time to mourn my beloved orphaned friend who just spent the last who knows how much of his life as a prisoner in his own body, only for me to cut him down rather than find any other possible way to handle the situation with him, then passing with a smile on his face, making me feel absolutely terrible for the deeds I've committed. Now's the time to fight a grey dude. And I hated this boss. Maybe it's just because I'm wearing light armor, but I got stunlocked fast and often. I beat this boss by bursting it down through both phases, because there are two health bars. Bursting down was the only real option though, because anything less left me open to being killed almost instantly. The clones, the projectiles, the clones projectiles, it was a mess. It feels like everything wrong with double bosses dialed up to 11. Hot take, I don't like any double bosses. And no, not even those two that you're thinking of right now. I sealed the dude away, sort of, in a horn of his creation. Then I seal him some more which knocks me out for I'm not sure how long. I awoke to fight and defeat William on the first try. I may have struggled like hell in fighting humans for the whole game, but I didn't struggle for nothing. I slowly learned how to get attacks in more effectively. At least, effectively enough. And with him clearly ignoring the rules of both challenges that I've already put him through, I really had no choice but to beat him. Which somehow has him beat me. And cheat! No! Stop swinging that thing! Stop blocking! Both of you, cut it out! Oh, okay, I was possessed, so that doesn't count. So now you're the only cheater here, Willie, my boy. Turns out they're doing the resurrection thing again, and are you gonna make me kill my friend a third time? Or I'm gonna be possessed again. That works too. And this was a lot easier than I expected. He's quick, but weirdly predictable. Most dangerous move in his kit was his pinwheel throw. The speed form does more closing distance than capitalizing on it. Also has some huge damage windows. Strength form is just slow. But I've got help from the outside from an old friend. You're occasionally accompanied by his monkey, which can do some fire damage. In the last phase, he has some big AoEs, but I've spaced bigger. He's fast, but I've dodged faster. He hits hard, but do I need to say it? For real this time. Unfortunately, one more finisher that I've got to do, but one that will end out the run to what I believe is the purest run through the base game that you can do. I'm rescued from my possession by something other than killing me, and nothing is going to be the same between these three, but that's okay. For the first time in a long time, there's hope of something more. And maybe there's some stuff on that in the DLC, but this run took 48 hours of playtime just to beat, which doesn't include any of the rest of it, so I'll probably play it someday, just not this one. 
or he's just gone forever. That works too. On that note, though, I hope you enjoyed your time here. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means I'll get to hear your thoughts now and on any future outings. Until then, remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.